if we've got the if you're able to see the project this basic project in the device okay that's really good if you're not able to see it in the device at the very least you should be able to see it in the browser that's gonna be close enough uh, for the moment and then we'll try to figure it out as we get some time but you, you should not fall behind that it doesn't work on the device you've got this simulator so you want to use the simulator I'll say one more thing about deploying and then we'll start to import our project here's something kind of interesting that you can do you can still use Google Chrome to help you debug on a device remember when we were running our CBDB project last week and we were in Google Chrome or Firefox and we went to the F12 developers console we can still use the F12 developers console to look at what's happening on the device the catch is you can only use Google Chrome to connect to a Google Android device you can't use Firefox anymore for that so let me show you how to do that uh, if you're able to get this to run on the device I'm going to run it on the device one more time. I'm going to run the project on the device. Let me just let that load up. The idea is that once I run the project on the device, I can open Google Chrome and turn on remote debugging, which I'll show you in a moment, for Google Chrome to connect to a device, to connect to a device that's there via USB. So. I've got it running. Visual Studio shows that it's running, right? Because I've got the stop button. I'm not seeing the ready to rock, but that's okay. I am seeing the res resume and such. But I've got it running. So I'm going to I'm going to turn on Google Chrome. Whatever website you're looking at, F12 to open up the developers console. Then you're going to see a three dot menu right here. You've got a three dot menu all the way on the top right for the main settings of Chrome. You've got a three dot menu for customize the dev tools, the developer tools. So if you click on this little menu, then you have more tools, remote devices. This will open up a panel down at the bottom that you might want to stretch out. And it'll show you here a device connected, uh, possibly. And when you click on that, it highlights it right there. And it says these are the apps that we can interface with. It's not going to show you here, let's interface with Instagram or Facebook, because again, our project is running in debug mode so it's open for us to be able to do this the official Facebook app in Instagram and LinkedIn and all of that is not so you're not gonna be able to hack into the uh, Instagram app through Google Chrome you can however see in my case I was running the blank Cordova app a test one and I'm currently running Campo CBDB so I can then inspect and then you get another Chrome window that will focus on the device and even give you a preview of what you're seeing and even let you click there's nothing to click on right now but we will be able to click here in Google Chrome and do stuff on the device remotely and from this panel on the side here I see the elements and I see the console that's where I see ready to rock so it is working it's just that perhaps the Visual Studio console doesn't show the very first console output now if I were to uh, press home to get out of it here we exited the app this says inactive if I go back to it we return to the app so this is just another way to continue to do debugging using good old Google Chrome or using Visual Studio what's cool about Chrome is again once we actually set up our app we will be able to click things here I don't even have to touch my tablet I can just have it there on the table and I'll be able to click on the device here see there's my finger moving around there I'll be able to click there and I'll be getting the output these tablets if you're borrowing a tablet from the class should be fully compatible and you should see exactly what I'm seeing if you're using your own device 
it may not be fully compatible because it depends on the version of your device, which version of, of Android. And I have people coming in all the time that they follow all of these steps and they, they don't see the preview here, but they see the console. And that's as best as it'll work on that device. It isn't fully compatible. So just to show, just to run through that one more time, if I close everything. After you've deployed your app, you launch Chrome, F12, go to the menu here for development tools, more tools, remote devices. And then you select the device, and then you select the app to inspect. And then that shows you the app. Question? OK, uh, if you're not seeing it in Chrome, it's not a big deal at the moment. This is just another way to do development. So I'll help you with that in just a little bit. So this project is, is a blank project. It's a shell of a project. It doesn't have anything meaningful. Well, we've got all of that work that we did last month that I want to bring in into the project here. So the assessment that you did that's what I want to bring into the, the, uh, the shell of all of this. So the big idea, before we do it, the big idea is I need to take, we need to take the code from index.html of the CBDB project we've been working on and paste it into this index file. We need to take the JavaScript code that we've been working on previously in that other file, copy and paste it into this index.js file. And I don't think we've done anything in the CSS, but we would copy it from CSS file into this CSS file. That's the big idea of it all. We would need to then import in the jQuery mobile files and all of that. So the idea is we're going to copy over all of those files. The way I'll do this is my version of CBDB on my flash drive is not um, as complete as yours. Yours is the one that's got the pictures that you did and those paragraphs and you completed the home and the save comic and view comic and such. So mine's not as complete. You want to use yours. but. I'm just going to use the one that I've got in the network folder, which is not as complete as yours. It's from 703. And the way we'll do this is there's several supporting files. There are several supporting files that I want to first import into the project. We've got the various JavaScript files and CSS files. In, in an Explorer window here, our project so far is CBDB is my JavaScript, jQuery, jQuery <coughs> images, and so forth. So we need to copy. We can just drag and drop. See if I can show this on one screen. From the CBDB folder, I'm going to take all of the jQuery and jQuery mobile files. I'm just going to select those and drop them into the WW folder up here. In, in Visual Studio, the WW folder, so you can just select jQuery mobile. CSS, jQuery Mobile JS, jQuery Mobile Map, and jQuery. Those four, just drop them into the WW folder. Like that. Well, we're going to get to that one moment. So first, I'm putting in the JS and CSS files.
the MyJS, My JavaScript in a moment. We're going to open it and copy the code and paste it into our Visual Studio file. And in a moment, we're going to open the index code and copy and paste it in a moment. Images is a special case because it needs to be put in in a special place. Question? Where should you put the four files? These four files right here are going to go just into the WW root level of the project. So they're just oh. going to drop in right there. So I drop them in. I've got them right there. jQuery right there. The images folder, let's think about this for a moment. The images folder, images folder has all of the icons that jQuery Mobile uses, and most likely the icons that you set up when you put graphics into your CBDB project. The confusing thing is here that if I were to if I were to copy these files into images folder, that would actually cause a little bit of a problem because those image files, which are related to jQuery Mobile, jQuery Mobile in here says, find a folder called images, and inside of images, you will find the images. If we if we put these separate files in a different folder, it might not find them. So you see why we put them here on the root level. We have a folder called CSS. We could put the CSS file in the CSS. We have a JS and we have a JS, which we could put into scripts. But because in our original project, they were all on the root level, I think that'll be better for all of the file connections to stay in place. So this images folder, the stuff inside of it, we're going to put it into the images folder. So the images ping, images SVG, Ajax loader, in the images folder, drop that into the images folder. Do not put the images folder in the images folder. That's what's going to cause that problem, that the path is wrong. It's just one of those three, you don't want anything there's only three things in that folder, yes. Yeah, but what about the powers have more? OK, good point. Yes, your images that are in the images folder, also put them in the images folder. Yes. So everything in the images folder should go in the images folder, because we've got an images folder already in Visual Studio. That'll take a little moment because it's a bunch of files. But eventually what you see here in Visual Studio is, OK, there's the, there's the icons ping, the icons SVG, the Ajax loader, which is a little spinning icon. And then any of your particular images that you used should be in the images folder. when you hover over? Uh, not with this, but in order to connect the tab. OK, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll check that a little later. So the next thing that we need to do some transferring of is the data in the index file. So obviously, we're not going to drop our index into here, because this index is missing all of the basic template stuff that's in there. It's missing the connection to Cordova.js. It's missing whatever is there by default. So we're going to open up Notepad++ really quick. We're going to do right click on the index file of CBDB, edit Notepad, or brackets, I guess. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the things in the body. So from about line 12, down to the very end, we 
we'll say we'll go over to jQuery, not the my JavaScript yet. So everything starting from the body, going down to script of jQuery mobile JS. I'm gonna copy that. Not including the word body. There's already a body in the index HTML. So not the body. Yep. I'm copying all of that. I'm copying that code. In Visual Studio, we will open the index HTML. That CVDB that we had there, we can remove it. And so all that I've copied over a notepad, I'm going to paste it in inside of this body. There's already a body. We're going to paste it. Down the web again. Down the copying. Down to the la to down to the jQuery mobile JS file. Our line numbers might not match up, but my line number is 162. So I'm going to paste that into the index file right there. Okay, so this copied everything that was, almost everything, that was the, the main design. It copied and we pasted in also our connection to jQuery, jQuery mobile. What was already there was the Cordova platform overrides and the custom JavaScript. In Visual yeah. Studio, in the index HTML. That's visual, but where is the other one that we What do you mean, where is it? From, right from Notepad++. Plus plus. So what we also need from the index HTML, one more thing here, at the very top, in the head, we've got a link to a style sheet. We've got a link to the jQuery mobile style sheet. That's a line we're going to need to copy too. So the, the, the style sheet link on about line 9, I need to copy that and paste it in the same place into Visual Studio, basically before the end of head, before the end of our head um, block. in Visual Studio. Uh, before, a good place for it is before um, the custom index CSS file. In Visual Studio, it seems to be line 14, yes, if you've got a brand new file. So over on the index.html file, the, the big idea is that we need the connection to the CSS file. We need all of the stuff in the body, all the way down to jQuery mobile. We don't need the my JavaScript because we're going to be putting that into the JavaScript file manually. And so in Visual Studio, the, um, the index file now has all of those couple hundred lines of what the project was. Save that. So 
So next I need to copy the code from the my JavaScript file. So remember in your CBDB project, it's not that I'm going to drop the JS file into Visual Studio. We have a JavaScript file that uh, the point of it existing is that's where your custom code goes. So uh, I'm going to open that one also in Notepad++. We already have a the function, the immediately invoked function. We already have the use strict. We've got ready to rock. And we've got all of these variables that go all the way down to the end. So basically, we're going to copy everything that's somewhere. Let's see the best place. Um, if you want to copy those comments, sure. So basically, after the after that console, because we already have a ready to rock console log in Visual Studio. So we're going to copy everything down to, but not including the final closing curly braces and such, because that one is for the immediately invoked function expression, which is already in the Visual Studio file. copy that in notepad and then I'm going to open the uh, index.js file so everything that we need to do is always going to be inside of on device ready so we've already got that ready to rock message in on device ready so everything that I copied from the JS file I pasted here before the end of on device ready. So the on device ready now is, is huge. It was all of the code we, that we got from the JS file pasted it pasted into on device ready. So confirming here, I've pasted it in and it goes here all the way really far before end on device ready. So you see the idea is when we were working with CBDB, we had that structure. We needed to take those files from CBDB folder into the Visual Studio CBDB folder. And now I see it there. Images folder has those files. My index file is there. The uh, jQuery mobile, the jQuery the CSS file. Yes? So would you normally just build everything in Visual Studio, or do you always do this? It depends. It, you could. You could. You, we, you could start from the beginning, Visual Studio from the beginning, so that your structure is already ready. So the way we did it was we, we had a web project, so we wouldn't be using Visual Studio for a web project. Um, you know, we use brackets, Dreamweaver, Notepad, whatever. But the great thing is that we can take a, a fully viable web project and drop it into a Visual Studio shell. But yeah, you could start from Visual Studio from the beginning, and it's already. At this point, I believe then we can compile it and check if it works on the device. Before I do that, remember to check your error list here. You may, in your copying and pasting, you may have missed a curly brace or something. So check that your error list uh, likes what you have. 
and then try running it. So this is a bunch of new content that has to be processed. It's seeing all the icons, it's seeing the JavaScript file, it's compiling a bunch of new things. So again, the more we add to the project, the bigger the folder gets, the longer the compile time. But eventually when the app is done, it's not going to be that big. It's going to be like one and a half or two megabytes. Our working project folder, I expect to get up to like 110 megabytes. But as we, uh, when we finally publish it for real, it's a lot smaller. So, my app, my welcome, my login, my all of that. So, we should be able to bring the project in completely to the device. It was a lot of copying and pasting, but we're going to pause here for a moment just to make sure it works. Um, question, Mauricio? Need a little help? I'll, I'll be there in a moment, yeah. So. If it, if it worked here, you should see your CVD be load up in the tablet. Um, I'm going to just create a, I'm going to do a quick sign up. Now it's on a real tablet, v at v.com. So I did the welcome, so I'm going to click join. So, the, so my app that was a web site up until last week now actually is on a device. There it is there. Again, yours is better. Yours has got graphics and everything like that. And then I close it. And it is installed on the device. I see it right there, Campo CBDB. And I launch it, splash screen. And then uh, it's going to then take me to the app. So let's pause here, and uh, let's make sure it works. And then we'll proceed.